Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me, your host, Tommy Gilbert, as we sit down and take a behind-the-scenes look into Titan Athletics with weekly interviews with coaches and athletes. This is Titan Table Talk. Hello and welcome Titan fans inside the Ames Library podcast studio. It is the second full week in February, week 19 of Titan Table Talk. And as we enter the last week of the regular season for Titan basketball, it is a basketball heavy episode today. Joined here in just a moment by Grant Hardy and Evan Schneider. And then coming up, we will have the women's basketball senior class as well. So Grant and Evan, thanks for joining us for the first time this year. Welcome. Thank Thank you. you Thanks for for having us. us. So uh, one, of the, one of the really pivotal weeks of the regular season just concluded and couldn't have gone much better. I would say a 2-0 and for the Titans at home against Elmhurst, an exciting one on Wednesday, and then, of course, heading up to Tarbell Arena and taking down Carthage on Saturday. Uh, the two teams that were kind of nipping at the heels in the CCW race, now a couple games clear, and, of course, that Saturday victory clinched at least a share of the regular season title. But before we get there... Let's talk about Wednesday. Um, awesome atmosphere at the Shirk Center. As usual, in early February, big conference game, a lot on the line. Um, Roper with a huge night, career-high 25 points and 8 for 8 from the line, 14 and 9 for Hakeem Williams, 7 offensive boards, not shockingly, for Marco Anderson. Uh, uh, Yoder with uh, 7.6 assists and 5 rebounds, and, and Trey Bazell getting into the action on the defensive end with a couple of huge blocks. Um, overall, a really good defensive effort, I thought, in particular from watching that game. Held the Blue Jays under 40% shooting, just over 20% from three. Um, aside from great win and a great atmosphere, what were your takeaways from that one? Um, definitely think it's most pivotal game of the season. Uh, that was one we were circling on our calendar from our first game back in conference when they beat us. Uh, and it was certainly one we needed to win if we wanted to win the conference. Um, I, we stuck to our game plan, kept them under the threes that they wanted, and, and certainly guarded the three-point well, uh, three line well. Um, so it kind of all worked like clockwork, and everyone uh, chipped in the ways they could and came out with the, with the win. Yeah, I thought it was a, a big bounce back from our loss at Milliken the week before. Um, and that's, that's a big deal, especially late in the season like this, because, you know, late loss to a team that we believe we could have beaten. It, um, a lot of teams will panic and make mistakes as that the season continues as it starts to unwrap. And so it's exciting to get a big win, two big wins uh, back-to-back to bounce back from that game. Yeah, and Blue Jays got off to a pretty hard, hot start on Wednesday night. We're up 23-16, 12 minutes in the game. Any particular message from Ron Rose in that uh, that timeout with about eight minutes to go to turn it around, finish the half on a 17-6 run, and took the lead and pretty much held it from there? Just sticking to the game plan, I think we got a little bit of ahead of ourselves um, during their run. Um, as long as we played the game we wanted to play um, and made sure we dictated how they, they shot the ball and how they played their offense, um, we would get back into the game pretty easily. Yeah, I remember sitting there maybe seven, eight minutes to go in the second half, 17-point lead at that point, thinking to myself, okay, this isn't quite how I thought this was going to go, but it's nice. Yeah, um, yep. you know, Especially when that's, that's the team that opened CCW play all the way back in November, which feels like a long time ago now. Um, and, and certainly, you know, coming into the season was going to be one of the three or four co-favorites in that, you know, <laughs> amusingly close uh, preseason poll. Uh, fast forwarding to Saturday, 70-58 victory up at Carthage. As we mentioned, clinch a share of the regular season title, the number one seed, most importantly for these purposes, yep. hosting rights for the CCW tournament coming up next weekend here at Shirk. Roper with 18, Hakeem 13-4. and four. 11 points, 7 assists, 4 steals for Luke Yoder. Uh, Soroka got in the action with 10 points as well. Anderson and Wilmson, eight boards apiece. Um, this was a much closer game coming down the stretch in the second half. Not surprising. CCW road game against a, a conference title contender. Um, tied at 46 with eight minutes to go. And once again, an 11-4 to run. Marco Anderson and Carlo Kolak uh, with, with three big shots between them to help put us up uh, 57-50 there. But what did you guys see, again, the second time facing off with Carthage, first time going up to their place, which can be a very, very tough place to visit in yeah. the middle of winter? 
So um, the first time we played them, unfortunately, their big man, Julian Campbell, was injured. And, uh, I mean, I played him in high school before, and he is a uh, load. He's a great player. It's hard for Harrison to get going uh, against Julian's size. And so um, he was off to a rough start, and obviously he's one of our key players. And so what's exciting to me and something that's been exciting to watch all season long is how everybody's buying into each other. And people that might get their name called for two minutes during the game, they're showing up in those minutes. And it's really exciting to see. You know, I mean, it's every day it could be somebody different. So, Yeah. And so much of that comes from practice too. When you're, you know, when you're playing a really tough non-conference schedule, and then playing in what's traditionally one of the better leagues in the country, yep. um, especially for the two of you, like you've you've got to be running scout team plays or some of the most talented big men you're going to find in Division Three pretty Definitely. consistently. Yep. Um, and obviously, you know, it's it's a role you have to take really seriously in practice to get everybody prepared and to get yourselves prepared too. Um, but how how does that make you better as a player for for yourselves as well? Well, certainly, I think for the younger guys, it gives them a chance to really understand how other uh, other teams run their plays. I remember um, before I started playing varsity, my freshman sophomore year, those minutes on scout squad were really essential. Uh, not only do the coaches take the time to uh, help you learn those plays, but you get them in your head, and now you understand. Like, okay, we know Milk and stuff. Uh, we know how. Carthage runs their actions, how uh, Elmhurst might run their actions. So all that is great for uh, building a, a very good uh, varsity player coming up and uh, understanding all their plays and, and, you know, where certain spots are, where certain players are in it. Mm -hmm. um, so coming up this week, the last road game of the regular season up at North Park. Uh, Vikings have had a little bit of a disappointing year probably compared to expectations, but still should be a challenging road trip for sure going up to Chicago. And then Saturday, Senior Day against North Central, 4.15 p.m. tip for that one or 30 minutes after the end of the women's game. And as we look at Senior Day for the two of you, uh, for Yoder and Soroka as well, um, you know, looking back on your four years, you want to share some favorite memories, favorite experiences, whether it's on the court, off the court, anywhere else from your, your four years coming to a close here? Sure. Uh, there's been plenty of, of amazing memories, uh, some that stand out in particular. Uh, the Greece trip we got to go on uh, with the team was uh, by far one of my funnest times, being, uh, being a Titan, just getting to vacation and travel with these guys, some of my best friends, and also getting to play teams that you would never even think of playing. Um, I remember playing a team in Thessaloniki, uh, and they're calling out all their play calls in, in Greek, and I'm like, you know, it, it's a bit of a culture shock or just <laughs> something different that you've been playing basketball for years now and it's just something you don't really understand uh, or you don't feel until you're actually in the game doing it. Uh, outside of that, also our trip to New York was Mason getting to play Yeshiva there, the, the hype around the game and then going into the game and warming up. Um, the fans there were amazing and great and getting to play in that atmosphere was, was a ton of fun too. Mm -hmm. Might have a future color analyst role in the future is dropping the perfect Greek pronunciation there in the middle of uh, <laughs> the middle of the sentence. Very nice. I've I've learned a bit of Greek since uh, since we've uh, took the trip now, so <laughs> it, it's rubbed off on me a little bit. Yeah, I mean uh, Evan nailed it. This being a part of this team the past four years has been the best experience of my life, and we've gotten to do so many different things that are all just amazing memories that I won't forget. The one that stands out to me. Uh, in particular, though, that is actually kind of recent, was Luke Yoder beating the professor in Venice Beach. <laughs> we, we pulled up, and they were just going to give us like an hour and a half to go around, explore. And, this, of course, as soon as we walk out there, we see this big bus with the big crowd of people. And, um, obviously, street ball. So we walk up there, and it was the professor, who is somebody we've all watched growing up, just making those street ball um, videos and so we were like somebody's got to play them and so of course Luke went out there and took care of business and it was just it was an exciting experience you want to walk us through that game <laughs> analyst style as best you remember because oh, I saw gosh. a couple of highlights physical, and I'm though. guessing yeah some others have but he, yeah he checked him pretty hard on a couple of his layups 
There's, I know there's some pictures out there. I think Bob Q might have posted one where Luke's halfway in the air and the guy's got his forearm stuck into his ribs. But I, I, I also don't think he was expecting Luke to be as talented <laughs> as he was. He, all of his games, he was going to like three points, and then they were like, uh, do you want to play him to three? And he was like, no, we're going to five. So yeah, trying to give himself the best advantage possible. Uh huh. What was the final score? I think it was five to two. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I know he got him on one. He like went between his legs and then did some layup. So that was the oh, only yeah. bad time he got him. I just said I told Luke or someone told him, don't go for the head fake. Just stay down. Whatever you do. <laughs> um, no, that was a lot of fun too, and something we weren't expecting mm-hmm. at all. Um, I'm glad Luke stepped up to the plate and, and took one for the team and. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody else probably oh, would have won that. And credit to the professor, too. I mean, that, that guy's, like, late 30s. To be playing oh, yeah. basketball to that level is pretty <laughs> impressive. So, How often does somebody actually beat him out there? I don't know. Probably not a sure. lot. I think I'd he was the only one that day, or at okay. least in that little air time yeah. section we were there. Okay. I imagine it's not a few. Uh-huh. I imagine it's more the not many college basketball players mm-hmm. stepping up to – to guard him. That's true. Out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so as you know, we look forward to, to senior day in a few days and then graduation coming up in a couple months. The scary question, anything set in stone or, or kind of tentatively at least planned for the, the post Illinois Wesleyan life? Yeah, I have uh, a job lined up at NISA investment okay. uh, advisors. It's uh, moving back to St. Louis. It's in downtown Clayton. Actually, uh, Greg, yes, he just retired from there. Um, but an academic All-American back in, I think, the 80s. Um, uh, he was a managing director there, and it, it, it's a phenomenal company. I got the chance to intern with them this summer and uh, got a return offer and immediately took it. So I'm, I'm super excited for the next chapter with them, uh, and I think there's great things ahead. Awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I'm just hoping to move up to Chicago, find a job in the finance industry, and start working mm-hmm. within it. I, I eventually want to get into wealth management, become a financial advisor. I know that part, but we're still currently searching. So, Heading north, heading south. I uh, For those who watched last week's episode and may have noticed that my usual Cubs Tervis tumbler was replaced, allegedly, with a Cardinals one, <laughs> that was our producer Tyler Wilson and some back-end editing Shout out to Kurt Swearingen. I would not have been aware of that otherwise, um, but conveniently it is not with me and not in frame today, so he won't be able to pull that trick. Evan, Evan was happy. Evan was enthused by that. It's good to hear there's another but. Cardinals fan around, this, <laughs> around these parts. I've gro- being, uh, having grown up in St. Louis, you're surrounded by him, but coming here was a bit of a culture shock, under, you know, realizing that everyone here is a Cubs fan and sometimes the occasional Sox fan. But it's still close to like 60-40 in Central Illinois or something like that. It's, it's a lot it's better than if you go All my North. teammates from Chicago, that's probably what that it is. is true. I think that might be it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's point the finger at Grant as much as you can. Um, well, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us today. Good luck this week. Once again, if you want to catch the Titans either on the live stream or, or live on the road, it is a 7 p.m. tip at North Park on Wednesday. And then, of course, Senior Day on Saturday, 4.15 p.m. following the women's game. Good luck with the end of the regular season. Good to see you guys. Thank you. You too. Thank you. We'll be back shortly with the women's basketball senior class. Why is Illinois Wesleyan the number one school in Illinois for jobs? Maybe it's because we're the AND University. That's right, A N D. AND. Here you can explore the arts and study in a pre-professional program, double major and play a sport, do an internship and study abroad. Your opportunities are endless. Tap or click now to explore Illinois Wesleyan and start your free application today. Welcome back inside the Ames Library Podcast Studio. Our second guest, is this a second guest really? It is the largest group of guests that we've had on Titan Table Talk all year. It is our women's basketball senior class, Emma Kornack, Lonnie Chanthabori, Megan Moody, and Taylor Tarver. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. 
Thanks for having Thank us. Yeah. Um, so this this is going to be fun to see if we can all talk over each other throughout <laughs> this entire time. But uh, congratulations on another two and zero week. Not the first time we've been saying that in here during CCW play. Um, big ninety nine to sixty five victory up at Elmhurst on Wednesday night. Uh, Seventeen points for Mallory in that one. Sixteen point six boards for Lauren. Thirteen points in just fourteen minutes for Laura Malum as well. And then, of course, the, the fun little record-breaking note of the night was Sawyer White's five steals to give her 92 on the year, breaking Rebecca Ayersman's record from 2017-18. Uh, pretty comfortable one at the half, up 43-24, to 24, and were able to mostly, mostly cruise on the way home, but uh, poured in 31 in the fourth quarter as well with some buckets from a, a bunch of the table right here, <laughs> uh, which is it's always fun to be able to put away, put away a game a little early and then be able to break out everybody in, in the fourth quarter for sure. Um, but first, going back to going back to the the steals record for Sawyer, which we've been you know, tracking over the last month and a half after the pace that we started the season at. But how much fun has that been to watch play out? Sawyer is very fun to watch play. She's very talented, and she was also game day graphic day. So we joke about that, mm-hmm. and this, the game day graphic always has a day. So um, yeah, it's also really cool because Rebecca Ayersman, she was our graduate, she was our coach our freshman year. Mm-hmm. So just like having that connection there, it it just means a lot. So yeah. Has this been a thing with the game day graphic day? Has this been a thing the whole season? I believe so. I don't know yeah. when it started, yeah. but I feel like it's been pretty consistent our four years that we've been here. It's yeah. definitely been so. a running joke. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not, not a joke. Even a joke. It's not yeah. a joke. That's <laughs> true. That's funny. And yeah. you guys trying to pay off Katie Gonzalez and crew to get yourself on the graphic here, or what? There's some. There's some times it's suspicious. Or like, who texted her? You know, she's she's got it down. She's talented in that for sure. Who is it who actually picks those in that? Like, who is it that you'd be going to? I don't know. I might need to follow up on this to find out. <laughs> I, have, I have no, no idea. idea. Yeah, I have no idea. It sounds like with you know CCW tournament and things coming up, there there might be some some <laughs> jockeying for position on the graphics. He wants to go off for you know eighteen points and nine rebounds or something like that. But it's something we look forward to too in the mornings. Who is it? So yeah, it's it's a mystery to all. I guess that's funny. We're gonna, we're gonna file that away as the deep questions that <laughs> yeah. come up on, on Titan Table Talk as well. Um, fast forwarding to Saturday, the last CCW road trip of the regular season, uh, 93-66 victory against the Firebirds up at Carthage. Um, once again, a 30-plus point quarter for the second time in the week. It was the second quarter this time. Uh, it was fairly tight in the first quarter up there and then ended the, the half on a 19-4 run, going to the breakup 57-33, um, 18 points for Mallory there on 8-for-11 shooting. Ava Bardick didn't miss a three-pointer in four attempts. Uh, 15 points for Kate Palmer. Team as a whole shot over 58% from both the field and from three, which I know you're already aware of since you know you were there. Um, <laughs> but it is it was the second highest in program history, a three-point shooting percentage, uh, 70% against North Park back in 2012. So if you're looking for you know something to shoot for this week or uh, going forward. 70. I don't know, that, that may not be too realistic, but hey, it'll be fun. And the 14 made threes the most since March of 2011 in the NCAA tournament against Wash U. So, uh, you know, we talk so much about how the team-wise defensive focus throughout the year has really helped you get through some tough games where the three-point shots were not falling as well. Not so much an issue on Saturday. How much fun was that to watch? It was a lot of fun. I think it was especially fun when Ava started making all those threes, and she was super excited, and we were all super excited for her. So 4-4, four, four, we always make jokes about that, too. We got the 4-4 four, four deal going on, so it was nice to watch her do that. So It was also fun to see that they kind of took turns with it. Mal went off in the first, then KP had her turn, and then Ava had her turn. It mm-hmm. was just fun to see them all just share the ball. Oh, and then we had the guest appearances from <laughs> behind the line for, uh, for Megan and Emma, too. Let's not forget about that as well. So. Yeah. What is uh, what is always so much fun, we've talked about this a couple different times with this team this year in particular, is how excited everybody is for everybody else. And it's all the time and it feels so genuine mm-hmm. as opposed to sometimes, you know, celebrate something for the sake of celebrating it. Like, you know, watching somebody in the last three minutes of a blowout game put up a three and watching the entire bench get up and get ready to celebrate. We, we have a couple pretty good video clips of a chest bump from... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember who that was now. Mal and Sawyer, I yeah. think they yeah. that's usually that's Mal down. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's their routine. Either yeah. a chest pump or a nice gritty. Yeah, in front of the bench. Okay. <laughs> Simple, but yeah, yeah. 
Delaney ever get in on the gritty mid game, or is that exclusively before game? Uh, Delaney, That's I've seen question. in the back a lot of hops, some some crazy jumps yeah. and stuff, mm-hmm. and she's at the front of the bench or the end of the bench. You don't know where she is, but it's it's not always a gritty, but she's got something in it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so coming up this week, of course, two home games, the Wednesday night weekday finale against North Park at 7 p.m., and then Saturday 2 p.m. is senior day against North Central. And games aside, I want to talk a little bit about just looking back at your four years, or five in Megan's case, and just favorite <laughs> memories on the court, off the court, on the golf course, as it may be. Uh, as you look back, you know, some of this stuff, for those of you who are going to be at the game on Saturday, you might hear in the, the memories and the things that I or somebody else will be reading before the game. Um, but, you know, so many times it's those little the off-court moments or the special on-court moments through the four years that you really, you know, look back 10, 20, 30 years from now and, and remember forever. So there's putting you on the spot with the high, <laughs> high pressure, what, what are you going to go with there? Um, but, you know, from, from any or all of you, some of the best things you'll remember from the last four years. I got to steal the best one and say when we won the conference championship um, Mm -hmm. or on the court, the NCAA run when Kate Kate made the buzzer beater versus (sighs) DePaul. That was just like, it it felt like a a once-in-a-lifetime experience to be able to experience that with Mm -hmm. your team. And, yeah, that that was amazing. So I'd say that for me. (laughs) Wow, yeah, you took... You, I know. She took the best one. So well, <laughs> off the court, two years ago when we went on our Oregon trip, a few of us, we decided to go hiking in not correct gear. We had tennis shoes on and our, mm-hmm. our little jackets. And I think we went to the seventh switchback or something. I don't know. It was up there. It was me, Megan, Caitlin Heller, and Lauren Huber. We went, I don't even know, it was far. People had, like, those... Those sticks you put in the ground and then those spikes on their shoes and we were just out there with our tennis shoes, mm-hmm. jackets. But definitely those views can't beat them. I still mm-hmm. talk about it with um some of like our underclassmen or um just about the Oregon trip in general. And I think those off the court memories are what we're gonna remember most. Like I'm not gonna forget that and we were passing people who were definitely well more equipped than we were and it was just <laughs> it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you that, know. That day, that ice day the that ice we day. got off at school, that's how I see that <laughs> yes, was. But yes. it was climbing a mountain or like hiking. It was, it was hilarious. There were so many people that fell. But kudos <laughs> to you it guys so for fun. making that far up because that was so scary. It was, it was so scary. So to clarify, when you say you were passing them, you were passing them on the way up and not sliding down the mountain and passing <laughs> them on the way down, correct? Okay. Yeah. It's definitely a team effort to get up the hill. I don't. We were, I don't know if we fell. Oh, <laughs> like some. Okay, no. I meant. I meant our group. We um, definitely saw falls, but we saw falls. Yeah, but yeah. It was rough though. Like I, won't I, st- say. I still have visions of, in my mind of people like falling, yeah. falling. No, I vividly some, remember one person wiping out and then almost taking me with her. <laughs> so, oh, I who was it? You gotta share. Call him out. It was Lauren. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know what you're talking but. about. <laughs> Nobody go. <laughs> She's not here to defend herself, so I think, I think it's fair game. Right? I'm pretty sure. Well, uh, we'll have Lauren Huber on next week solely to talk about falling on ice. <laughs> yeah. That may not be true. Uh, but anything that doesn't involve falling, getting tackled down a mountain, and or potentially not showing up to an icy mountain with the right equipment <laughs> that sticks out in your mind, Megan or Emma? Um, the two things that come to my mind when thinking about the team would be either our pre-practice hangouts in the locker room, either we're singing, dancing, or just talking about the randomness conversations you can imagine. Um, but I feel like that really helps our team um, build the connection we have. And then I have to shout out the trip to Italy. That was just a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And to be able to do that with the team was just amazing. Say, and I have used this uh, on a couple other teams, but if you can remember that far back, I know it wasn't last week, but favorite thing you saw and favorite food you ate in Italy? Favorite thing I saw was probably the sunset in Florence. Was that yeah, mm-hmm. that was yeah. so yes. cool. We were like above the city, looking out as a sunset. It was those are probably the best pictures, and it was just a beautiful sight. Oh. Like, 
I could go back. <laughs> <laughs> of everything I ate, and I had so much pasta. Probably the gelato, though. That was, mm. I always splurged on the dessert, so mm-hmm. I just say that. As, as you should. Of course. Uh, what kind was it? Oh, I had, like, every flavor. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not every flavor, but at least 10, 12 flavors. I mean, that that's pretty close to every at that point. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're not over there for three months, I don't know how many more you're supposed to try. That's so. true. That's true. Um, I think that my favorite memories from the basketball team would probably just be the reason I came here first of all was that it was such a family atmosphere whenever I came and saw all the girls and that's something that I have loved so much about our team. I feel like we've always been super close and we all hang out outside of basketball and just those memories of us having random dance parties before practice starts <laughs> in the circle with Coach Smith or just stopping mid-drill and we're all like dancing and singing together like those are like the little things that you might not necessarily know about but we're all so close and we have so much fun together and that's my favorite thing. Yeah. And, and I've known Coach Smith for a fairly long time. And she's had a lot of great teams and a lot of alums and a lot of players that she's loved coaching. I don't know that I've ever seen her speak about a team on and off the court the way she talks about you guys mm-hmm. and uh, just how much fun she's had this year coaching all of you. And it's, it's always a reflection on everyone, but it's, it's a reflection on the senior class. It always is. And uh, the leadership and the fun that gets brought to the program every day because of that. And... Yeah, that's uh, that's me speaking for her, but I've heard it a lot this year. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Like we all do. Like generally, have so much fun together. Like the celebrations on the bench. Like they're all like so genuine. We're all so excited for each other. So that's the best part. Mm-hmm. Almost constant dance parties. <laughs> all <laughs> <Yeah>. the time. <laughs> all the time. If we don't have one, it's weird. Like practice weird. is not the same. <laughs> not right. <laughs> We ever get uh, Brian Ayersman in on any of those? Oh, for oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some yeah. some songs, you play lip gloss and you just see what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or walk it like I talk it. Yep. Yeah. That's, a song. That's another That's good one. Song. He's got a whole dance for that one. <laughs> yeah. He's got the moves. <laughs> Turn the camera on to him and those songs come on. And you'll see. He loves his TikTok dances. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. always coming up with a new one to show yeah. us. <laughs> the other day, he's like, Taylor, um, I saw this one that we should do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Things you uncover on the podcast that you didn't mm-hmm. necessarily want to know, but now you do. <laughs> yes. So now, now for all of our fans who are watching this, we'll be at the games Wednesday or, or Saturday. Please feel free to, to call out Coach Ayersman from the stands and see mm-hmm. if we'll, we'll do a little something for you during a timeout or after the game. Or Now he's going to kill me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. life will go on. Um, well, for those of you who want to come out and watch the Titans this week, the last two regular season games on the CCW slate, once again, Wednesday, a 7 p.m. tip against North Park. Saturday, a 2 p.m. tip against North Central. We'll honor the senior class before that game. Thank you all for joining us. Congrats on a great career here at Omar Wesleyan and hoping it continues for quite a few more weeks. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so much.